Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Our topic today is HHV8 Kaposi sarcoma. Again, on our presentation, um, we wanted to summarize in nine minutes and teach you everything in nine minutes. And repetition is the key, my friend, okay? There's no point in watching like one hour, two hour long presentation. You don't have time to repeat it. So we uh, condensed our presentation. All our presentation is going to be under nine minutes with all the facts you need to know. And then you keep watching it so you can stay in your brain, okay? Again, my name is Premier Charat. I'm a program director, internal medicine residency program, translational residency. I teach medical students and residents. I'm also director of research as some professor of medicine. So let's get into our subject, HHV8. It's a double-stranded DNA and member of um, Redinoviridae genus, and the genus is Gamma Herpes Viridae subfamily. So there's some classification you need to know, my friends. First, HHV8, there's like a, a primary infection, Kaposi sarcoma. When Kaposi sarcoma, you look at it, there's different varieties, one, two, three, four, five, right? Endemic, classic, endemic, African, uh, immunosuppression-associated chaos, and non-epidemic chaos. And then on the left side is the main classification, primary infection, Kaposi sarcoma, multicenter Castleman disease, primary effusion lymphoma, Kaposi sarcoma, inflammatory cytokine syndrome is there. So we're going to talk about all of it. Life cycle, again, every, any, all, just like all of your herpes, is like a, there's a latent phase. If the virus hide and all of a sudden it appears in a different time period, right? Usually it kind of be attached to a chromosome in the circularized plasmid. In the lytic cycle, sometimes you have the exogenous stimuli or physiological factors to get transformation from latent to lytic, okay? Viral genome uses rolling cycle mechanism to replicate and produce linear genome. Epidemiology, 5% in Africa and parts of Amazon basin, 5 to 35% in the Caribbean, less than 5% in the North American and North European descent. Risk factors, residents in the high endemicity area, men who have sex with men, HIV, and Kaposi sarcoma risk factors, kind of like, again, HIV, low CD4 count, the men with the men having sex, and Mediterranean, Jewish, older age, male sex, and diabetes, and all of them contributed. Let's look at the pathogenesis, it's very important. After the primary infection, HHV established long latency in the cells of lymphoid origin. CD19 plus B cells are the natural reservoirs. Remember, CD19 plus B cells, okay? And then HHV8 may be induced by the lytic state. Multiple signaling pathways are activated. The cycling that inhibit RB and controls the progression of S phase of the cell cycle and BCL2 like protein that prevent apoptosis. There's a secre secretion of angiogenic cytokines induced mainly in the immunocompromised state. Transmission, mainly transmitted to the transfer of body secretions, uh, just like any other thing, saliva and genital secretions. Very important, sometimes organ transplant, blood transfusion. When you look at the same signs and symptoms, let's look at the primary infection, okay? In the usually in these people, may, usually common in the immunocompetent person, um, asymptomatic. So if, the, if your patient like doesn't have immunocompromised state, they usually say, say asymptomatic. Immunocompromised present with the fever, rash, splenomegaly, lymphadenopathy symptoms. Kaposi sarcoma usually present with the multiple painless pigmented classic, you know, the Kaposi's lesion. That may be a raised lesion. A lesion typically occur in the skin, but may also occur in the mouth and internal organ. There's like you can cause like GI bleeding, sometimes can present in the GI tract also. Again, epidemic um, HIV, epidemic uh, Kaposi sarcoma occurs in patient with HIV and AIDS, person with extensive cutaneous lesions, and it can have a, um, it can be very extensive and could be life-threatening. Then you got the classic Kaposi sarcoma presentation occurs in older men of Mediterranean, Eastern Europe, Ashkenazi, Jewish, or like South American origin without HIV infection, and the indolent disease that presents in the cutaneous lesion in the lower extremity that slowly progress over year over years. Okay. Then you have the epidemic um, <clears throat> Kaposi sarcoma men in sub sub Saharan desert people, and there's the immunosuppression associated, iatrogenic transplant associated chaos, and developing the patient long long term immunosuppressive therapy. Then you have non epidemic um, Kaposi sarcoma people in young children, young and middle aged men, sex with men, HIV in. Uh, uh, without the HIV infection, okay? So non-epidemic chaos are happening the young, middle-aged men who have sex with the men without HIV infection, remember that. Then you have um, the other classification when we talk about is uh, 
We talk about um, you know the main primary infection, Kaposi sarcoma already. Let's look at the multicenter Castleman disease is the next one. Um, let's see what are the <laughs> symptoms associated with the severity. Okay, let's talk about severe of MCD. That is the multicenter Castleman disease. Wide spectrum. Some patients exhibit mild symptomology. Elevated cytokine levels contribute to development of B symptoms like fever, night sweat, weight loss, present generalized lymphadenopathy and hepatosplenomegaly. Then you have the other main type, primary effusion lymphoma. Now that is clinical presentation is primary effusion lymphoma depends upon the areas involvement, whatever the site specific or shortness of due to pleural effusion, increase abdominal growth, lower extremity edema, low blood pressure, echocardium dragon into cardiac tamponade, typical B symptoms. We talk about fever, weight loss, and night sets are present. Then the another classification you got Kaposi sarcoma, inflammatory cytokine syndrome, which I call KICS. And the presentation similar to multicenter casuman without underlying pathology, uh, including fever, fatigue, edema, cachexia, respiratory symptom, gastrointestinal disturbance, altered mental symptoms, neuropathy is common. So when you diagnose, the next thing is like HHVA. Diagnosis by, you know, you can primary, I mean, some of the carposis are coma, multicentric, and primary lymphoma recur histopathological testing, right? So you need immunohistochemical staining um, with the antibodies recognized in the HHVA. HIV, I mean HHV encoded latency associated nuclear antigen. That's what they look. Then you then you also do the PCR identification of HHV8 DNA. So diagnosis you can do biopsy. There's like 69 percent, 89 some sensitivity, 69 percent specificity around 89 percent, and. Um, Present, I mean, you know, Kaposi sarcoma, when you look at, you know, you have the classic lesions, right? History of immunosuppression can be made by the conventional. You can do the hematoxylin eosin staining, which is characteristic of dermal vascular proliferation, increased number of blood vessels, extravasated blood causing highly in globi or accumulated or hemosiderin be there. And then diagnosis of Castleman, you can do the biopsy, sensitivity again, 94 to 80, 98%. And then you can have non-specific constellation B symptoms. Biopsy have like a, a onion skin pattern or lymphos, I remember. Onion skin, skin pattern, sometimes very important for the examination purpose. When you talk about diagnosis of primary effusion lymphoma, again, classic um, uh, primary effusion cells are large, round, irregular nuclei, deeply basophilic, and their sensitivity is pretty much 76 and 81 percent. So diagnosis in organ transplant, serology limited to diagnose uh, to the use of diagnosis HHV8 infection, um, very, I mean Kaposi sarcoma, or herpes virus, inflammatory cytokine syndrome we need to know. It consists of greater than two clinical symptoms, greater than two different categories like fever, fatigue, edema, cachexia, and respiratory symptoms, gastrointestinal disturbance. Then you got lab abnormalities, hyponatremia, anemia, thrombocytopenia, hypoalbuminemia. You can have elevated C-reactive protein and the viral load in plasma greater than 1,000 copies. So how do you treat it? HHV8, like first is the surgical debulking, then you got cytotoxic chemotherapy, antiviral therapy such as gancyclovir, foscarnet, sidovir, um, edifovir, all of them, and retroimmunosuppression in patients with a solid organ transplant is important. And the treatment of Kaposi sarcoma, you can localize therapies like radiation therapy, surgical excision, topical medication, or typical option for like limited diseases. And then treatment of MCD, which is various manifestation of the disease. We already talk about other symptoms. And uh, come with the anti and interleukin IL-6 therapy, clinical lab parameters can resolve up to three to four disease. Then you got primary effusion lymphoma and the preferential regimen, the chemotherapy like uh, re infliximab, I mean, sorry, rituximab, etiposide, doxorubicin, vincristine, prednisone, and cyclophosphamide, and intrathecal therapy. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, um, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.